Hey guys, we're out here talking about the TAC small dot target. Uh, it can be used as both dry practice and live practice target. Generally, this is what I warm up with. Uh, this curriculum was originally inspired by Ron Avery of Tactical Performance Center. Um, I always say there's nothing new under the sun, and that's exactly what this is. This is just my spin on that original curriculum. So what we're dealing with on this target is one inch dots, five in each row. Each row represents a fundamental of firearms marksmanship. We've got grip, front sight focus, target focus, isolation of the trigger finger, and something new to some of you is trigger reset. Each one of these deserves at least three rounds. If you're limited on ammunition, one round will suffice. Generally, this target is shot from three yards. If you wanna challenge yourself that day, you can shoot it from five yards. What we really wanna do here is focus on each fundamental piece of this drill. Okay, some of the different elements that I added into this target. Uh, on the grip section specifically, I added a vertical stripe here. So what you'll be able to see is any deviation left or right when you actually press that trigger. Same thing for front sight focus. I've got a horizontal line. That way you can focus on the absolute razor's edge of your front sight. The target focus. This way you can have something to focus on during engaging that target focus target. So you actually focus on that small white dot when you're engaging it. Isolation of the trigger finger. You should be focused completely on the isolation of the trigger finger. That's why I left it up. And then trigger reset, we're focusing on our trigger work. We're focusing on resetting the trigger after each firing. All right, so when we look at the grip portion here, we've got this vertical line. It's gonna show me any deviation left or right that I may have. When I establish my grip on the handgun, I wanna get nice and high into the back strap here. I want the webbing to have a little bit of flexion in my hand while my finger relaxed and on the side of the frame. The majority of the pressures that are added on the grip here come from my pinky and my middle finger. Uh, if we were gonna add a heat map over this, we would see red, red, yellow, and green. We wanna have as little tension as possible on the index finger so that it's able to manipulate the trigger. The thumb at this point of acquisition of just the firing hand grip, just gonna be relaxed in a vertical manner. All right, now we have all of this surface area that's open. I'm gonna tape my support hand and I'm actually going to bring my fingers and create tension with the skin here as I build that grip. The point of building this grip is to take these two pieces of my palm here and crush them into the back of the frame. So I'm gonna take this, you can see my skin pull taut here. So I'm gonna to pull together and then at the back here, I'm gonna bring everything taut. You can see there's no tension in my thumbs. They're actually gonna relax along the side of the frame here. All of the tension is gonna come back into the back strap here and forward here like I discussed earlier. So that way we have, if we were able to point a digital arrow here and here, and that way when I have recoil, I'm gonna have the impulse come forward and backward and have as much resistance as I can possibly impart on the frame. Now with what I just talked about on the grip, it's doing all of those fundamentals and applying all of that pressure on the gun while also avoiding any disturbance in the trigger and the front sight. That's why we have that vertical stripe. All right, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and load up. Now, when I shoot this specific rig, it's my duty rig. So I'm gonna shoot from retention and from double action every single time. I wanna make sure that I get the right iteration and consistent results every single time so that I'm not surprised when I actually need to use these skills. Okay. After each string, I'm gonna reset and go to the holster.
All right, now that's the grip portion. Each and every time I wanna see this vertical stripe, I wanna see what I'm doing. Specifically, I would point out this one, right? I'm pulling, to, or I'm driving too much with my firing hand, and I told myself, okay, clamp up on my support hand, get, get your fundamentals set back where they need to be, and that's exactly the results that I produced on the second one, right? This one is a, is a great example too. So I'm to the left a little bit, I want to adjust a little bit, right? Okay, I'm using too much firing hand. That's, that's one thing that I have a problem with. And I want to be as honest as possible with you guys. So I'm trying to correct that with the support hand. I correct it more with the support hand. And then I got lax. I went, oh, my results are good. You'll see this pretty often in human nature. Oh, my results are great. Cool, keep doing that. All of a sudden I get deviations. Relax, breathe, focus on your fundamentals and the results will come. All right, so now we're gonna to go to the front sight focus portion. The front sight focus portion has this horizontal line across each one of these one inch dots. What that's for is so that you can place your razor's edge of your front sight on that line in order for you to get consistent results each and every time. So it's important to know how your handgun works and where your rounds are gonna land, even at three yards. You may have a set of sights where you need to rest the target on the top of the front sight. You may have a set of sights where you need to rest in the middle. As you go further back, you may have impact shifts. For those of you running red dots, you may find out that with a 25 yard zero, you're actually having to hold about the bottom of the first row in order to get a proper hit on this target. Deviations left and right are gonna be your grip. Deviations up and down is possibly you anticipating the recoil, you're not focusing on the front sight, you're focusing on the target. Don't focus on the target yet, that's the next string of fire. All right, let's shoot this thing. All right, razor's edge of this front sight focus. So now this is exactly what I was talking about with the, uh, what, what I would call mechanical offset. All right, and that's the end of the front sight focus portion. You'll see here, I actually started drifting my front sight to the top here. I personally wanted to see what my hits were gonna look like at that point. You'll see all my rounds are hitting low. This is with my front sight razor's edge across here, they are hitting low. So, you need, again, you need to know your equipment, you need to know where your rounds are gonna hit. And this would tell me if I wanted my rounds to be perfectly center in the target, I would actually put my front sight across the top of that dot. But when you're running drills like this, consistency is key. So even if you're shooting here and your rounds are hitting low, keep doing what you're doing. The drill is to focus on the front sight, not to get rounds in the center of the target. Focus on the front sight and keep doing what you're doing unless you're seeing deviations left and right. Correct your grip, focus on the front sight, press that trigger to the rear, slow and smooth. The next thing we're going into is target focused shooting. What we're gonna do 
is focus completely on this white dot here. I'm not focused on my front sight at all. We'll put up a representation on the screen of what that actually visually is gonna look like, but we wanna completely focus on this black dot. And moreover, I'll say it again, focus on this small white dot here in order to get the results that you need. All right, so target focus shooting. I'm gonna completely focus on the target here. Make sure that you're continually focusing on the target. All right, and now you'll see, I'm picking up my speed a little bit more. I got my recoil control down. I've got my grip set. I've got my front sight focus worked out. And now I'm completely focusing on the target. So I don't need an absolutely perfect razor's edge front sight focus. I need that target focus. So I've got a little bit more deviation that I can play with here, all right? Now the reason for target focus shooting is when you actually get into a shooting engagement, or you're gonna be shooting a practical shooting scenario if IDPA or USPSA, your vision is going to wanna to focus on what you're shooting at. You're gonna have a really, really, really tough time bringing your vision back to that focal plane of the front sight when your brain wants to focus on that thing that you're engaging. Especially in a violent encounter, you're gonna be completely focused on that other human being and not the target at all. So this is why we need to acclimate ourselves to shooting a target focused sight picture. So isolation of the trigger finger. What I wrote on the target here is focus on the action of the trigger finger, take out any slack and press cleanly through the trigger wall. The trigger finger should finish flat. Now, what does that mean to you? Okay, so I've got an empty gun coming from double action. So I'm gonna place my index finger, split the distal phalange if you wanna get crazy with it. And I'm gonna drive that finger to the rear. Now, I'm going as slow and smooth as possible, and when I finish, you'll see this angle finishes flat. So I'm actually driving with the end of my index finger here, and that way I can produce consistent results. When I reset the trigger, it stays at that angle, and then I drive to the rear again. Um, I've heard people call this like bending your, your index finger like an Allen key. Uh, I've heard finishing flat. Um, it's both similar types of thought processes, right? I wanna produce a flat plane for me to drive that trigger directly to the rear. Is that possible? No, I'm a human being. So all of that pressure is actually coming this way, but me focusing on finishing flat is going to keep me on the same plane to finish to the rear instead of driving the trigger finger in like that against the frame, okay? Which drives me this way. So I wanna produce a straight to the rear trigger pull in order to get the proper results that I need. So now we're gonna isolate the trigger finger. Hopefully you'll be able to see me finishing flat. Um, if not, focus on the earlier part of the video where I discuss this technique. All right, and those are the results of finishing flat. 
This should be something that you train in, right? As you get further along this drill, you should be more and more comfortable with picking up your speed a little bit. Um, if you get results like this, do not be discouraged. Continue to do what you're doing, apply your fundamentals, fix what the problem is, and get the results that you need. All right, so the next portion that we're gonna get into is trigger reset. Now, why do I need to focus on my trigger reset? Well, it's the difference between precision shooting and shooting for defense, right? Or shooting for practical shooting. What we're doing here is we're firing, we're printing the trigger to the rear, we're resetting, coming to the wall, pressing to the rear. When we start to get into speed, when we start to get into defensive shooting, we wanna take the pinning the trigger to the rear out of the equation. The more that you can work on this technique, the better it will pay off later, all right? Trigger reset, so I'm gonna fire around and I'm gonna immediately reset the trigger. I'm not gonna pin it to the rear. During the recoil impulse, I'm gonna reset and get back on the trigger. This is a great way to start eliminating trigger freeze. Trigger freeze comes from, like I said, firing, freezing, coming to the rear, resetting, letting the slot come out, come to the wall. We wanna begin to eliminate that, so fire reset, fire reset. You'll see me work on this. We're gonna go a little bit faster with this technique. Um, my acceptable cone of deviation, if you will, is going to increase. Uh, I want ma the majority of my rounds to be in this black ring, but if I get rounds out, I'm not discouraged. What I'm focusing on is a trigger reset technique. All right, from retention, we're gonna bring the gun up, work on this trigger reset drill. We're gonna fire reset. Hopefully you guys can see that on there. All right, let's take a look. So exactly what I was talking about before, my cone of deviation, if you will, the deviation that I'm allowed to shoot is gonna increase just a little bit more. My expectations of my area of probable hits should increase because I'm increasing my speed. Now, if we focus on all these fundamentals, we'll get similar results. If we look at it like a group here or a group here compared to a group here, my cone of deviation or my expectations of myself have very much increased, right? Uh, we're going from almost a half inch to a full inch. Uh, just set that expectation for yourself. Now, when we talk about trigger reset, we talk about trigger reset. Again, what I'm doing is I am driving that trigger to the rear, letting the gun reset, and during the recoil pattern, I'm actually resetting and getting back on the wall, okay? So, guns resetting, coming back, okay? It allows me to go a lot faster because my trigger's already ready to fire the next round, okay? All right, so that is the TAC small dot target. We shot about 75 rounds here, three rounds in each one of these dots. If you don't have that much ammo, you can shoot one round each, you can shoot dry, you can work on each one of these manipulations dry, or you can shoot it with an airsoft gun. We're only here at three yards, you can definitely shoot with any kind of training medium that you have at your disposal. That's Attack Small Dot Target, guys. I'm Ben from TAC. Thanks so much.